Sup? Welcome back. It's your boy, me, Brad. We got Kevin. Hello. Craig. Hey. As you can tell, Craig has uh, gone through some technical difficulties and lost his microphone. Fuck so. Amazon. I'm out on Amazon. Anything that they say is refurbished, don't buy it because it honestly will not work after the first time that you use it. Bro, you bought a refurbished mic. Like, I mean that I from the bottom of I could have seen this heart. coming. Don't be light-skinned with me. I could like, have seen this up. coming a don't mile. Don't be away. light-skinned with me. I'm going to be straight up. I'm <laughs> Stay away from Amazon's refurbished bullshit because it ain't going to work. All right? We learned that today. So, so this as is you can tell. by my Apple product, my Apple iPhone 10, which is also glitchy as shit. And I wouldn't recommend going out and buy that. But sit tight. In September, they're coming out with a brand new iPhone. So that's going to be awesome. Well, let's get to the content. I was about content. to say, dude, are you, are you done? Yo, get it out. Did get you, it Dan, out. Did you, you know, vent? I think we should just get this out of the system. Like, get it out. Yeah. And, and you know what? Are you done? Are you I'm done? done. Are, are you right. good? So are you straight? You know what? I feel better. Are you done? I feel a lot better now. Are you I'm done or are you finished? Are you going to keep repeating yourself or are you going to get to the fucking content? All right. He's fired up. Guess Let's what we Guess what we're drinking, everyone? We got our White Claws. White Claws. Oh, I believe it. We're washing our Cheers. 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 Wait, Wait, be, be, careful. Be, be careful because my computer was just right there. We were just toasting over my computer. Hold on. So hold on. Before we get into this too much. Yeah. Brad, I got a quick question. Tell me about... The last, the last podcast that we put out, I want to hear about the feed. We might not have got a ton of feedback, but we did get some feedback, and I think it's some quality feedback. So tell me a little bit about that. Um, so you know how we said that this was sponsored by White Claw? It's really yep. not. Yeah. But we're just advocates for the brand. Yep. Well, you know, being me, being the social media manager and promoter of the Millennial Y and Stay Frothy podcast... You know, tweet it out to uh, stay or excuse me, tweet it out to White Claw. Just our little, you know, our promo video that I put yep. out on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Follow that shit if you don't already. Yep. Um, and White Claw liked it. They liked the tweet. There you know. So if there's anyone out there who's like, man, nobody's looking at my shit. Nobody's giving us the time of day. Granted, they didn't. Dude, I hate when you fucking. I'm, you know I'm what? Pull back from the mic a little bit. It seems like you're screaming. Oh, I was about to say. I th- yeah. thought you were speeding Not me. Being I hate an when asshole you do that to shit. You. I'm just I saying, hate when like, you do I that shit. Seems like you're screaming so at people. This is a marriage right now. <laughs> this is a marriage. I love him. I love him. It's been going it's on for not, two hours. We've been trying to figure out the mic stuff. Yeah. Anyways, we're, we're still new to the game. You we're know, still new. we're learning. We're learning. We're still very but, new. Very new to this. But game. But we've already making an impact. We've gotten one. We got a like from a we got a like from white from we, a reputable brand. We got a like from growing. white. And granted, they don't have a big following on Twitter or anything like that, but everyone knows White Claw. And I'm not gonna sit here and say that White Claw listened to the entire 30 minute podcast that we did. If they did, Who thank knows, you. Dude. Who knows? If you maybe. if if whatever rep you is out there. Say that. I mean, maybe one, they did. One thing I'd like maybe to believe. Did. One thing I'd like to believe because it is a summer. It is somewhat intern season. I'd like to believe that there was a kid in there at White Claw that's like, you know what? We've been mentioned. I'm going to check this out. And they were like, oh, there's some three washed up guys talking about how they just put down Bud Light and they started to pick up White Claws. And you know what? What a beautiful time to be in America. What a beautiful time to be alive. Hey, brands love to see shit like that. You know, right. any if there's just the general public that's put the general public that is putting down another brand for another for a replacement brand, they're going to eat that shit up all day because they personally don't want to dog another brand because that makes them look bad. It makes them yeah. look makes them look cheap. It makes them look like like their brand is not, White Claw's not to cheap. the, yeah, to the White Claw's not, not cheap. I just paid $13 for a six-pack. Yeah. It's not cheap. Well, White Claw is like, definitely um, tier one. Yeah, they're tier one. I was actually in Atlanta a couple weeks ago, and the number one thing I was concerned about, being a millennial, mm-hmm. I just want to get that... You know, that Snapchat with the White Claw on the lake. That was pretty much it. Bro, I was drinking White Claw on the White lake Claw in the summer. on the lake. It was awesome. It was Ain't nothing better than that. Well, so, uh, on a Sunday, too, which is the best day. So, day. me and the homies, we were up in New York. Obviously, you know, it's like we're having this big party, doing the penthouse thing. Brad wasn't invited for obvious reasons. <laughs> yeah, and, thanks, asshole. Um, so, we're up there. Like, you know, we get bottles. You know, you got to hit your main stage, your tequilas, your vodkas, your whiskeys, you know, things like that. Then, you know, we also got a bunch of Bud Light, but I can tell you one thing, because it wasn't the best party I've ever been to for one reason, one reason only, and that's because we were running a little short on White Claws, and by a little short, I mean there were not any White Claws at the party. I'm out. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't go. I'm glad you didn't come, because I would have felt bad, because you would have been looking for some White Claws. 
So yeah, of course I would have. Generally speaking, White Claws will make every party, will make every day drink, will make a trip a lot more special. Go out there and buy yourself some White Claws, especially for your homies out there with hair in your chest. Get you some White Claws because it's it's the best. Yeah. It is okay. the best. One last thing before we move on from White Claws, Chef Mike. What you cooking Chef, up, bro? Chef Mike. Yo. What you Yo, got in the kitchen? Chef Mike, do you cook? You don't cook uh, your meals with white uh, <laughs> with white wine anymore, right? It's just it's just white claw, right? Yeah, that's what gives it that spice. It's that spice. Yeah, yeah. That's what if I was. If you're going cooking for. with love, you're cooking with white claw. Exactly. I appreciate that. Thank you. You Me can't see Mike. Love. You can't see Mike obviously in the video, but you heard him. He's cooking with love. Um, I'm actually gonna go off of like what we had planned. <clears throat> have your parents like listened to any of your content? I know. Don't freak out over here. But have your have you shown your parents any of the content? That Absolutely we, we not. Put out. Okay, maybe that's just me then. Uh, Yo, you've been showing Calvin Peck? Oh, no. Like me out here cursing and whatnot on bruh, the podcast? Bro, my, like my the dark mom. Skins? I mean, I've been doing it's this such for a my light skin move right there. I've been doing this for two years, so like my right. mom's like all in my shit, and so she's like, why? You guys need to Whoa. stop drinking. I'm going to have to shut her down. <laughs> 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 shut her down. It's been a pleasure, boys. Yeah. Ever since we just found out that uh, Brad is actually showing this to the generation above us, not the millennials, which is completely off I'm base. Sure. I'm All triggered. Right. This is just the sign that my parents are supporting me. You know, who else is going to support you if it's not yourself and your family? So shout out to my mom. Who support my content, even though she may not like really understand what the hell we're talking about, and she's questioning why we're drinking these white claws. She's, she should grab herself yeah, a white claw. She's not white questioning claw. for a second. <laughs> once she gets herself, once she puts her lips on a white claw, I swear to God, I swear yeah. to God, the white the white claw is gonna be nice. I actually yeah. really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Good. Nice good. question. I'm about to introduce nice. my my mom. Just turned seventy. What's my gift? White, white claws. claws. Happy birthday. I just taught you something new that you haven't seen in the first 70 years of your life. Low cal. The most beautiful good drink time. of your business. I appreciate that. Absolutely. It's a low yeah. calorie good time in a can. What is better than that? All right. Anyways, moving right, on. Moving on. What's um, next? What's next? <clears throat> we, Craig and I had this bit. Craig, me, Craig, Botto, and Craig's girlfriend went to the movies two weekends ago. And I think it came up actually at dinner when we were all eating. And we hit, we were on to like the topic of just music nowadays, but then we looked back and we were, no 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 what was it what was it we were in so the, essentially what happened was we were in the um, restaurant we were, we were listening how, to like, old school music about how music now music now is like incredibly PC and obviously you know um, socially you know the United States of America has kind of like moved past um, really objectifying you know certain individuals and or. You know, well, just promoting objectifying certain, like, lyrics and, and promoting certain types of behaviors. So whether it's like you know being a gangster and like shooting people and selling drugs isn't as like appealing as it used to be, and um, you know other other types of lyrics aren't as appealing as they used to be. But primarily, um, and this was actually Big Mike that brought this up, was that there's songs out there that were absolute bangers back in the day that would probably not fly in or be that popular today. And so we had actually started out with the Enrique Iglesias song. And I don't know if you guys heard this. Everyone's but if you're a millennial, song. you obviously understand this. Everyone has heard this Enrique song. Enrique Iglesias' song, Tonight, I'm Fucking You. It's called Tonight, yes. And then it has in parentheses. I'm fucking you. I'm star, yes. star, star. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And, and you know, I wish my computer yeah, wasn't dead because I wish we could actually read the, the lyrics to it. But it's like... Here's the situation per my reputation. Oh, we can pull it up. Tonight, I don't mean to be rude, but I'm fucking you. I'm like, I, you know, I don't think that that would necessarily fly today because those are pretty clear. Those are clearly crazy lyrics to actually say to somebody. Like when you're in the club, so, and you're looking someone dead in the eyes, and you're saying these lyrics, and then it ends just, just like tonight, I'm fucking you. All right. You. So to bring this, bring well, this, you bring this back yeah. a bit more. So, to elaborate the lyrics yeah <clears throat> in today's social climate and in just today's 2018 society especially with social media and everything that's been going on lyrics like these that have been put out back in 2010 and below we were just like we were flabbergasted that this type of content these types of yeah go ahead so here are the lyrics it goes why'd you Put the lyrics out, oh, bro. My, my Come bad. on, bro. My bad. <laughs> so it goes, man. here's the situation. 
been to every nation. No one's ever made me feel the way that you do. Mm -hmm. You know my motivation, given my reputation. Please excuse me. I don't mean to be rude, but tonight I'm fucking you. Enrique, given your reputation, like, if you, like, actually dissect these lyrics, it's, it's kind of creepy. So given, if you dissect these if lyrics, you I'm really going to say, no, say it plain as day. He's a, a, a chain predator and sexually assaults women, according you know to this song. Actually, some, some millennials might not know about this, but there actually used to be a show to, called To Catch, to a, catch predator. a Predator. And, uh, you know, there might have been one of those times where Enrique Iglesias, underneath some different <laughs> name, might have actually been underneath To Catch a Predator. Right. It's, a, it's like right can after... We fact, can we fact check this? Right after he, it's possible. Right after he finishes the whole refrain, it's like record stop, and Chris Hansen walks in, he's like... Enrique, why don't you take a seat? <laughs> <laughs> Enrique, we're going to have to... Uh, uh, why don't you take a seat? Yeah. Um, so, um, clarify for me, uh, what is your reputation? <laughs> and when you say you've been to every nation, can you also clarify that for me as well? <laughs> uh, uh, Enrique, uh, Chris Hansen here, and uh, just when we were having... A, you know, we were in the group chat, and I'm just going to pull up uh, what you said here. Uh, tell me if you, this is you literally you. said this. Let me tell you if this is you. Uh, if this is a, a Latino player, sixty nine, sixty nine. I want to fuck you. Yeah. You <laughs> know my you? motivation. You know my motivation. Was that you? Per my reputation. I think. I think. <laughs> I think that he's guilty of everything that he actually uh, went ahead and you know came out with in the song. It's ridiculous, and it also like piggybacks on a lot of other songs. And you know, when you're when you're younger and you hear this, when you hear this shit, you're like, man, like this is fire. And, you know, you're like 13, 14. Well, years at old. our age, yeah. I mean, the beat was nice, and we were just like dancing, literally in the grinding. club in college, and it was like, yeah. I mean, the song oh, is absolutely electric. Love. It just goes to show, like, you can literally rap any type of lyrical content into a good melody and a nice beat. It's all the producers, And man. people are just like... But you can't producers. do it anymore. Oh, word? You're going to fuck me tonight? Remember the... <laughs> remember, the remember, like, the Yin Yang twins? Yes. You know, it's talking about, like... Another example. To the window, to the to wall. The wall. That's Lil John though, and the Yin Yang twins. Yeah, Lil yeah, John, yeah. And yeah. The, it was the same, same difference. The sweat yeah. was still dropping down all their balls, like, the entire time. Like, <laughs> oh, ski, 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 ski. Motherfuckers. I didn't even know what skeet meant <laughs> before I heard that song. I'll tell you this. I didn't know what skeet meant. Yeah, that's Atlanta homegrown. That's the Magic City, yeah, baby. It was not a, <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a coincidence. From the land of Oz, the Magic City. It's not a mean? coincidence. Kids down the ATL, when they're in the choir together, they're like, To the window, <laughs> to the wall, to the swing. You gotta hit all the octaves. You gotta hit all the octaves. But no, yeah. I will say this one thing. Like, My mom is gonna did, hate this segment. <laughs> You shout it out to her, so I only blame yeah, her. You gave her a shout out, she's so gonna have to show her, dog. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just gonna say this like, it was like, even in like the school dances and stuff, like it was just a constant thing where it was okay, we're gonna go from Ying Yang Twins Salt Shaker to Ooh. Ying Yang Twins Whisper Song to Ying Yang Twins I Don't Even Know, you know, like some other thing. To hey, we're gonna do a little John to the wall, and then we'll go to some David Banner the song. The whispers, yeah. the whisper song had to be one of the most degrading. Choruses to women. May I step in here again? Ever, yeah. Lyrics. Craig, Craig's gonna uh, go ahead and uh, so uh, here are the, the lyrics. lyrics. Per as uh, the report, I actually think this is the edited version. No, this is. So it says, "A hey, bitch, wait till you see my dick." Well, first off, that line is just not gonna fly today. If you, if you <laughs> and he repeats if, that actually uh, <laughs> a lot. I think that's the entire refrain, and then he just goes. I'm gonna beat that pussy up. Like, I think if you did that, plus, like, plus, like, you know, I don't wanna get into politics, but like Trump winning the presidency, mm -hmm. and you combined those two things into like some, some millennial like convention, I, I think that people's heads would literally <sighs> explode. Yeah. Like, it would, it would be one thing where just people would, there'd be so much fire in them, they would spontaneously. This come just. Down. I just don't think this would fly. No, 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 no. CNN would have a field day. Yo, buddy, what's that song uh, with Justin Bieber in it when he just comes in with those vocals? Um, Every song ever. Um, the newest one that came out? Yeah. The newest one? Yeah. It's called, um, 
You stick out in the crowd, baby. It's a no, br- no, no brainer. brainer. Yeah. No brainer. Yeah, if you just had Justin Bieber in this song, just being like, oh, wait till you see my dick. Like, and you're like, like <laughs> man, that shit would be PC 2018. That's a platinum, re- that's that's a platinum, platinum record. record. 2018. That's true. But I, will, I will say this. I was just on Instagram, and I did see uh, Little Yodeling Boy. You know, his music's now at the strip club. I just saw it on Old Row. Like, he grew know. up very fast. <laughs> yeah, he, he grew up he very fast. He got cocky pretty they, quick. I've wait. seen him, like, be shooting off girls and stuff. Like, he's, wait, wait, wait. They're, they're actually playing his stuff at the strip club? I mean, needless oh, to yeah. say, he probably... I just pulled it up. It's on Old yeah. Row. Man. Yeah. It's nuts. I mean, Man, he probably does... 2018. He's probably doing pretty well. He's out there living the rock and roll lifestyle. You know, if I have anything, any suggestions for a little yodeling boy... You know, strap it up. Be safe. Be smart. Don't do drugs. Don't drink too much. He's already done a lot of drugs. Man. I know. Honest. I know, man. He's harder than I am. I can't. I can't wait in like a couple years to see like the E. It's true Hollywood story of Yodeling Boy because now it's completely different. Back then it was like, oh, like you know, like Nikki Sticks just shot up a bunch of fucking heroin. Yeah, like nuts. But now it's gonna be like Yodeling Boy went from being some no name in wherever state he's from to yodeling in a Walmart. His, it's gonna be a roller coaster, and I'm all on board with that. I am too. There's nothing more that I would like than to be watching that documentary on like a Tuesday night, having a couple of white claws. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, that's yeah, all I'm gonna say. A couple white claws, sipping at your jewel, you know, just having a good wholesome good, time. Good, good watching a time. good feel, you good American story. You know what his story would remind me of? I feel like his story would make a great like lifetime, Columbus, like a uh, lifetime movie. Oh no, behind MTV behind the music. M- or an MTV uh, behind VH1, the music. VH1 behind the music. Yeah. yeah, behind the music, exactly. Just like That's a kid point. who was randomly yodeling in a Walmart. Yo, what's the best? Behind ended up becoming a a cultural sensation. Yeah, dude, I agree. We can actually do that real quick without getting deep into it. What's your favorite behind the music? I have. My- I don't even remember that shit. Really sad. Yeah. 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 He calls himself a millennial. <clears throat> Get out. I know. I know. Uh, mine I know. is. I think probably mine's Sublime. I really like the Sublime one. It's pretty sick. Like I don't think a lot of people realize that you have like uh, Gwen Stefani and you have uh, Sublime on the same stage together and you know performing together. They were like a thing in like Long Long Beach in California. It's a pretty cool vibe. I'm sorry. I'm Bobby and Whitney. You call me crazy, but that shit was a roller coaster ride yeah. you know, and incredibly entertaining to watch. I grew up down the street from there. I respect that. Really? Yeah. They, I, I thought they that used to live up in uh, Montclair, New Jersey. No, they didn't. Bobby Brown, Whitney Houston? Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston in Country Club of Atlanta. I'm not in that neighborhood. That's how very nice. I actually neighborhood. went trick or treating at their house in, in New Jersey. Well, I'm sure, you know. When I was they, a puck. They, they got they, houses. They got like, houses. Yeah, they were loaded. They, they got houses, <laughs> let's be honest. Right. I have uh, an apartment, two bedroom, two bath. It's. <laughs> Like the one in Atlanta is. is probably like a condo, <laughs> but it's also a mansion. I don't right, know. right, right, All right. What yeah. are we on to next? We gotta, we gotta move on. We got houses. All right, moving on. So, just remember, guys, the era that we grew up in, music like that doesn't fly anymore. No, I think that's a good summarization of that. Don't. I mean, it just we're way too PC you know, at this music point. Music actually now doesn't even have. Granted, I like a lot of house music, but they don't even have words anymore. It, like I thought it was crazy, man, because we were listening to that like in middle middle school and high school, and we were like dancing and gr- like in the era of we're grinding. The grinding era. We're like, the grinding like, era. Like when we were just like walking up, and girls would just be like, <laughs> just get your grinding on. Yeah, you know, get that thing going. Yeah, and it was and it was all consensual, you know, like now. <laughs> you know, we'll get thrown in prison real quick. <laughs> no, yeah, you can't unannounced walk up behind a girl oh, anymore. Yeah. Just like do the whole like, hey, lottery, do you like the way I look? <laughs> you don't. It's not the men's warehouse. I do not guarantee you're going to like the way I look. Oh, my God, man. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, but you learn. You get thick skin. You grow up to be uh, That's actually the people that we are. DC misses a lot of that. We need more grind bars from time to time. There are not a lot of not a lot of grind bars. Yeah, maybe it, maybe it was an era thing. You know, like we're at the age now it's where about like being primal. We're we're like uh, essentially getting married at this age, so nobody's really like going out and. You're saying we? Huh? All right, bro. Moving forward, right. yeah. what we got going on what's, next? What's bro? going on next? <clears throat> I think the next thing that we were going to talk about was. Um, you guys mentioned it to me before we started the podcast, but you were saying something along the lines of like, like separating work 
friends and then right. your own yeah. personal lives like outside of that but then still having those work friends follow your personal life outside of work so kind of lay down with like, social kind of media for this. yeah hold on lay down the framework for this like I, I would love for people to understand i think craig you do a good job of explaining this because there's a reason as to why we brought this up and it has to deal with a specific situation that happened while i was while me and craig were working right so this is specifically what I'm talking about. Like when you start out working, you know, obviously you meet all these new people and all your relationships are green and you have to decide like kind of how in, how embedded folks are going to be. Who, in who's going to be life. opened up into your personal right. life. And so it's like a very tough medium. So whether it's girls or guys, you know, you decide who your friends are and then as you like, you know, gain tenure within your organization, you have to determine yeah, whether or I not could, it makes sense to like – kind of let people behind the curtain, let them know who you actually are. Right. And from there, thus trust that, you know, when you have situations when you're out of office and when you have situations where you're on vacation, that they're going to like hold it down for you and not like throw you under the bus for like who you actually are. And so, you know, and Kevin, for Kevin's example, and, and I'm just going to, so I'm going to explain this and pass it over to him, but essentially Kevin was working with a guy and, you know, he was a good employee probably for like a month. Next thing you know, you know, he's kind of pulling the whole disappearing act, not showing up to work, not really working that hard when he's there. And, you know, you really wonder about him. But, you know, he disappeared for probably a couple of weeks and he turned to me. He's like, I don't know where this guy is. He's a bum. Yeah. I don't he's know where this bum. guy is. And he's not producing, not doing anything that I'm asking him to do. So he just went ghost. He just went ghost. <clears throat> and so, you know, you think like, man, is he like in the struggle? Like, I don't know about him. So all you can do is assume the worst. All you right. can do is assume that like... You know, he's trying you're to like, figure stuff out. You're like tapping into your feelings. You're like, man, I hope everything's okay. Like, I hope this guy's like just, oh, he's just going through a rough patch. And, right. you know, you're your nice. sincerest feelings come out and you're like, right. man. And, and Kevin's obviously just like, I, you know, honestly, the kid's not coming to work. Like, this is crazy. Turns out to me, he's like, do you know where this guy actually is? And you know what? He actually made the mistake of opening up to me because I'm closer with Kevin than I am with him. I'm like, yeah, I know exactly where he is. <laughs> well, one step, one step, one step back. What do you say? <laughs> When you say he, you're talking about the guy that was working underneath me. And you're yeah. like, yeah, actually, like, I know the guy somewhat well. And then you're like, yeah, I know exactly what this guy's doing right now. He hasn't been in an office in, like, four days. He shows up late every day, that type of thing. And I'm like, hey, man, you're, my success is off your success and vice versa. So we got to work together as a team. Right. And then I'm like, hey, Craig. Or I'm just like, yo, where, where is this guy? Like, I haven't seen him in quite some time. Like, what's he, what's he doing? And then Craig's like, one of those guys is like, hey, hold on. Pulls up his phone. I know where he's at. <laughs> <laughs> he's in Miami. The Snapchat story will win every time. He's in yeah. Miami getting hammered. He's, he's in- letting all of his friends know about it, except for the folks in the office. So unfortunately, he actually let me know about it. Obviously, that got out. And, you know, it's kind of like eye-opening. So where this topic comes from is, where do you draw the line? I think there's a certain thing where it's like you have to develop some type of respect, right? Like you have right. to have some type of thing where like, you build up enough credibility to the point where, hey, you know what? Oh, that's a jewel. That's a jewel tag right there by Chef Mike. He's a little jewel thief over little here. Little jewel thief over there. He's got to make sure he's get Danny you know, enough, jewel enough uh, energy to make this, the the meal. Thank you. Yeah. Also, but, my my mom always asks like, "What the hell you're smoking?" I'm like, "Your mom's mom. a lot." Yeah, because she's gonna watch this and she's <laughs> gonna be like, "What it's, the? It's what crack. is? What is Craig smoking in that video?" I'm like, "Mom, Jesus oh. Christ!" It's All right. Anyway, second. sorry. Go ahead. Continue. All right. So, so anyways, focused on Brad's mom right now. Yeah. All right. So anyways, <laughs> point being is, uh, yeah, you know, like there's a certain point where I think that after you build up enough credibility, you can go to the next level of being like, hey, I, I know that I can trust these people because I'm gonna put out my my first foot forward in my job and make sure I do my my work before going out and acting like a fool in front of everyone. Right. Like an example of that, when I first started a couple years ago, well, I think people need to know you're responsible. Right. Well, that's your agree with my. Point. It's, like, you it's like if you get a don't job. People need to know you're responsible. Like if you do your job, and you come in. That's what I'm saying. No, put in the work. Put in the workplace. Like, like people need to know you're responsible. Point. Like you can hold down a job and do your your job efficiently, and then whatever you do outside of work, it's it's your own personal business. Yeah, let him, right. let me get this punchline because that's, that's, that's what exactly he's that's about the whole, to say. That's yeah. the whole point of like you have to combine like your work life with like your 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 personal life and those things intermix and like how do you control that. So when I first started at um, you know one position, I started with the company, and you know two I had already purchased this way ahead of time. I was going to go to uh, a music festival, and I'm going like all my buddies were me raiding there the entire time, 
And you go through this process where you're like, oh, all these people are saying, oh, I see you're taking off. Like, hey, Kevin, you're going to take off a couple of days. Like, what, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just going to go here and hang out, blah, blah, blah. But you don't want to tell Why do someone, you care? Why do I care? No, no. Like, the people who are asking, oh, you're going to oh. take off this many days. Like, why would people ask well, you, like, how many like, days you're taking off? Because I work with them directly. You know uh, what I mean? Are so, they, like, your direct reports? Not direct no. reports, but just, like, yeah. yo, we sit next to each other all the time. Like, they're at, like, you know, we're, we're in the pits, man. Like, we're talking. Okay. So at the same time, I'm uh, like trying to hide that I'm about to go to a music festival, camp out for three days, and like rage. So I'm trying to make sure that I don't say anything too much about that. And I just started this company. I don't want to say anything too much about my, you know, personal life. But through one, through one, <laughs> through one thing, white <laughs> white <laughs> <are> so <laughs> Through one thing or one thing or another, it comes out, man. It comes out. Yeah. And then it's like, how do you make sure that you present yourself so enough? presentable way of being like a professional and I think it comes back to like the work that you do while you're there and this kid wasn't doing it so there's like the fine balance of yes you can be professional and you can you can share your personal life but at the same time you also have to be like yo when I'm in the office I'm I'm, I'm in I'm, I'm dialed in I'm, I'm not yeah I'm wired I'm here to do my job I'm gonna do it efficiently I'm gonna get exactly. my shit done right exactly. and, and so, this kid didn't do it so, so right and then there's that that there's that skewed points right so what Kevin's saying is he was going to go to this festival no matter what. And so whether you allow people to get behind kind of the curtain of understanding what you're going to do there is a choice that you have to make. Because when they talk to your superiors and they're like, oh, by the way, Kevin says he's going down to Atlanta. They can say one of two things. Yeah, he is. He's going down to visit family, have a good time, meet up with friends. Or they're like, yeah, he's going down to Atlanta to go to a <laughs> music festival and black out for three days in a row and make a complete fool of himself. And who knows if he comes back? And that is worst case scenario. Right, right. So real quick, that is not what happened. That is not, that what, is happened. not what happened. I'm a respectable. He, he's shaving kid. ass right he now. He did the former. He did the former, the former, not the latter. We know grammar. Former, not latter. Yes. He did not do the latter. Yes. Um, yeah, where are we where are we going with that? I think the point is, you yeah, bring it home, bring it home. Oh, yes, the point home. is, all right, all right, sorry. So, just fucking nail that shit. Fishing. Bring we're it home, fishing. brother. And we're catching him on. We're catching him on. Catching him. We need some help to bring this on. I got you. I got you. Here we go. Here we go. So, so the point being is, come on now, boy. I think there's 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 a good there's a good point of hey, look, whenever you're in a professional place, you always have to make sure that you have some type of relationship with the people around you. But at the same time, anything that you do outside of work could impact you in work. So the point being is. Tighten it, do, up. tighten it up. Do not do not act like a fool. And if you act like a fool, be able to back it up. Right. And also, at some point in time, after you've been able to build up a reputation of, hey, look, I'm going to come in there, I'm going to execute, then maybe you can be a little bit more lenient. Yeah. But don't be a, a fool that comes in there and acts like an idiot and then doesn't show up for work. And then you're down in Miami. And then, and then posting stuff on online exactly. for everyone to see. And yeah. then they're just like, well, this guy is just a complete asshole because he does nothing at work. And then... Obviously, we're we're paying this guy to just be yeah, an asshole. A bottle of uh, champagne. Yeah, we're paying this guy to be an asshole out in whatever in state, fountain, country he's in. Blue. Yeah, know, I could see how people idea. would be Listen, um, we, offended by every that. Every once in a while, we all go out and have a, a couple too many white claws. <laughs> but in the end of the day, <laughs> you got to bring it home and keep it professional when you're in the workplace. Yeah. I think that's what we're really getting at. And then if you are going to go out and like, you know, sip a little too many of those black cherry white claws, you have to understand that, hey, if you're with your friend, tighten it up. Don't throw me under the bus when I'm like out sick the next day. Tighten it up. Tighten it up, brother. All right. So where are we going next? Do we have enough time? Nah, that's the it. Or that's the end of it. Wow. Wow. Yeah, we we steamrolled through that one. All right. Excuse me. This wouldn't be a stay frothy podcast without some frothy burps. Huh? I right. guess so, man. We just got fired up about the podcast. Well, listen, viewers, I hope you had a lot of fun. We got a lot more content for you. I mean, God yeah, forbid. Every, we got every a, week. We have a know. list of a bunch of other stuff. Tune in next time. We'll make sure to deliver the content. Can you give a preview of what's coming next week? Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Chef Mike, God, he's so much smarter than the rest of us. Right. And so, so there's a couple of things that we want to talk about next week. We didn't get to it this week, obviously, because we're very passionate people, but... You know, some of the things that we want to talk about was fantasy football, unfortunately. Fantasy, yeah. I mean, that's... We, it's, it's come around the corner. I understand that maybe not everyone loves it, but it's just a big part of, I think... I feel all, like everyone uh, plays fantasy football. And even if you don't, it impacts you in some way because you're getting dragged to some fucking football game. Yeah. Well, yeah. And then the other thing is uh, we've realized this, and especially Michael Pena, love you to death, but your most recent Netflix movie was complete garbage. 
So we gotta trash. Out, trash. So we got to figure out what Ass. to do. How do we inform Netflix that you got to stop producing dog shit? Producing dog shit. I mean, Netflix, that's, that's no way to quit throwing shit. shit at the wall and hoping it sticks. Yep. It does stick, though. That's sometimes, what we're going to talk about. Sometimes. Shit sticks. God, God damn. You I watched watch the Michael Pena video. I watched the up. Michael Pena video, kind of, but like I just really wanted it to be better. And we'll get to it on the next podcast. So I guess that's it. Love the haters. Stay All right. frothy. All right, fam. Peace out. Thanks again for watching. If you did watch it, you a real one. You the real MVP. Peace.